people here today, gone tomorrow. Right. That's one of the reasons I do photography. He's thinking I'm one of those dudes on TikTok that just goes around taking photos of the girls on the streets. A lot of people would be mad at me if I let a foreigner come into Washington Heights to tell my story, you know? Yo, what's good? We're back with another walkie talkie. We got the homie Ribsy. Dave, you caught me by surprise there. What up, what up? We in Washington Heights right now, my hometown. This isn't a town, it's a neighborhood, but my home neighborhood, we uptown, I'm excited. And uh, I haven't shot here street portraits ever. So let's see what happens. Yeah, hell yeah, let's go, let's get to it. What camera are we shooting with today? So I got my Hasselblad 500C, which is my go-to portrait camera. And I got the, the classic 80 millimeter 28, the old one, the non-coded or whatever it is. Yeah, this is my this is my baby right here. She's been giving me some problems recently, so hopefully today everything goes smoothly. We'll see. <laughs> you so you grew up around here? Yeah, yeah, I grew up in this exact neighborhood. Like we just got out the train on 177. Uh, that used to be where I used to hang out with my homies back in like elementary school, middle school, some of my high school. And now we're walking east towards Highbridge Park, which is where I grew up playing Little League baseball. Where I played a lot of basketball, street ball, New York street ball. That's where I cut my chops. And uh, yeah, all these blocks, these are the blocks I used to walk on. So it's always nice to come back here, but we'll see if I get gun shy with my camera. <laughs> I've never shot up here. So I've been wanting to, since I got hooked on street portraiture, I was like, I gotta go uptown. But for whatever reason in my head, there's like a little block that makes me second guess shooting up here. And I don't know why, maybe I'm too close to the people that I, in my head, I'm like, oh, they wouldn't want to be photographed or it wouldn't be as smooth of an experience. It's all stupid. This is all just my own head blocking myself. But this is, this is on my list and this was the perfect kind of kick in the butt to get out here. Because if you, if you hadn't suggested it, I probably wouldn't have come up here all summer. <laughs> I got a certain type of like scene or situation that I usually get drawn to. I don't like just stopping a random person that's walking by and be like, excuse me, can I get your photo? That doesn't speak to me. I like catching people that are kind of chilling, being themselves, doing whatever they do, but kind of situated, not like on the move. And uh, hopefully that's what we get. And I know there's a lot of people chilling in the Heights, so we're gonna find them. You hear the music right there? You see that? Yeah, what is that? Is that a lizard? What is that? What is it? Oh, what is it? Oh, it's called the beer dragon. Yeah, beer dragon. Holy shit. Can I get a photo of you with the lizard? No, no, you with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You put it, put it on you. Put it like on your shoulder or something. It got a name? What is it? Rex. Rex. That's what's up. Oh, I'm shooting on film, so I gotta, I gotta measure the light here. Two way, one, two, fit. I photograph a lot of people in the streets, just chilling. So when I saw the lizard, I was like, yo, I gotta get a photo of that. <laughs> He's camera shy. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Just look at me. You do a serious face. There you go. Look right at the camera. And then one more. Just look that way. Like this way, this way. Like that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, bet. Dope. Appreciate you, man. I'm Eric. What's your name? So that right there is Washington Heights. That's what I was expecting. People chilling outside, hanging out. Usually, I'm gonna say something a little controversial. Usually it's Puerto Ricans that got all the animals on the snakes and shit. You know what I'm talking about. You've been to Coney Island. Yeah. But Dominicans are known to fuck around with some, with some wild animals as well. So that's an example right there. <laughs> I wanna get the Hasselblad wet. That's good, that's good. Oh, I don't wanna get your mic wet. Oops. So auto transplants, if you haven't drank from a fire hydrant on the street, you're not even close to being a New Yorker. I'm just gonna put that out there. I've been doing this shit my whole life and look at me. I'm powered by this fucking gutter water, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but it's good though and it's cold. Yeah. You're sitting here chilling on, chilling on your childhood stoop, <laughs> right? You took, so you, you took classes at ICP recently. Are you still I taking did. it? No, the class is done now. So I took, a, it was a three month class, one, one class a week. And uh, it was about street portraiture with Amy Touchette, who's a New York based photographer uh, who does a lot of street portraiture. And honestly, it was a great experience. Um, the class was not about being taught how to do photography or being taught how to do street photography or portraits or any of that. 
It's about helping you, the individual, figure out what it is that you want to do. And that means a lot of different things. That means what kind of street portraiture, that means you know, how do you want to engage people, that means what kind of message you're trying to communicate. I don't have all the answers to those questions yet, I just don't, but the class really helped me start to think about that stuff. When the class was over, I had so much momentum personally that I kept going out and I was very active and I, and I really love what I created like at the end of class and then like the couple weeks after that because I was just, I was riding this wave of momentum that really felt good. I, I think that's the beauty of doing a class that's extended over time. Something you'd obviously recommend is somebody looking for kind of that? I would definitely recommend it. There's a huge diversity of classes there so I cannot speak for every class or every professor or whatever, but I think in general, if you're someone who's looking for that organization, but also a bit of that spark to really start to get you thinking in, in the right direction. A class at ICP would definitely help do that. Uh, it's not cheap, but I talked to Isaiah about this. Isaiah Winters, who I had on my podcast a while ago. We were like, listen, I could have spent that $800 on a new lens or a new camera, or I could have spent it on a class at ICP like I did. Take your guess which one had a bigger impact or would have had a bigger impact on my photography. You know, that. When I thought about it, that was like, game over. We're taking this class. You do whatever you want. But if, you're, if, you, if you have a certain amount of funds and taking a class is one of the things you can spend money on, I think that's worth spending the money on as opposed to a new camera or more film. I kind of like this kid's look right here. Yeah. Yo, my man, I like how you look with the towel on you. I'm a street photographer. Can I get a photo of you? Yeah, just chill right there. That's perfect. I'm Eric, by the way. What's your name? Noah. Noah? You from the Heights? No, I'm from the Bronx. The Bronx, I work. I'm from right there. I grew up on 173rd Audubon. At four. I shoot on film, so I'm just measuring the light right here. You went to the pool already? No. Nah, 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 you going now? All right, babe, just, just look straight at me right there. All right, one, two, we'll do one more. I'm gonna back up real quick. All right, one, two, perfect. You say your name was Noah? Thanks, Noah. I appreciate you, Noah. Enjoy the pool. Yeah, Washington Heights, I've, now that I'm older, I appreciate it more than I ever have. Because obviously this is this this will build me. This is this is this is my identity. So why do you think it took so long for you to come back and like photograph this neighborhood? I learned I learned street portraiture when I was living in London. That became a thing there. And then when I came back to New York, you know, New York City has a hello. What's up? New York has a certain a certain thing you think about when you think about street photography and street portraiture. That involves downtown, you know, Soho, Lower East Side, Washington Square Park, not Washington Heights. And I fell for that too. I fell for the same thing. Um, but very quickly I realized, yo, everybody's photographing in Midtown. Everybody's in Washington Square Park. Nobody's in Washington Heights. I have a duty. I'm gonna say this pretty strong saying, but I think I, I would have wasted a part of my life if I die and I never photographed in Washington Heights. And I truly mean that. You know, I'm very happy that today's happening because this, this, should, this should be a start. This should be the beginning of, of it all. Living in New York City, if I didn't photograph people of all varieties, like, that wouldn't be fair to me in my head because I grew up seeing people of all kinds, all genders, race, whatever, everything. And I think my photography should reflect that. Let me ask you, what, what drew you, when you first got into photography, mm -hmm. what drew you to street portraiture instead of studio work or fashion or landscapes yeah, yeah. or even like street, like traditional street yeah, photography? Yeah. Honestly, street portraiture is the last iteration of photography. Like this is like, if there's different chapters in my book of photography, this is like chapter 15. Like I've done so many other different things that I think some of them do lend itself what are this, but on the street portrait is the last thing I've started doing. Um, the reason I started doing it is because um, I, was doing, I was trying to do candid street photography, you know, the classic stuff that's really popular and people love. I'm just not good at it. And also I don't enjoy the process. Whether I'm good at it or not, I don't enjoy the process. And I think that that matters a lot because like, why am I gonna do something that I truly don't enjoy over and over and over again? Some people love it. Some people find it thrilling. Some people love the chase. I don't, I had been doing street portraiture without really knowing, especially in London. In London, I met so many people on the streets because as the American, for whatever reason, everybody just wanted to talk to me. And that meant interacting with a lot of interesting people. So I photograph a lot of these random people in London. And whenever I just wanted to take photos, street portraiture was there. I could just photograph random people in the streets. I didn't really know that this was like a big thing that people have done. 
over time and that there's a history there and like a really big legacy of like amazing photographers doing street uh, portraiture. And then I started doing it a bit intentionally and then that kind of like, re like finalized it for me. It was like, okay, this is it. This is something we should attack. A lot of the, the fashion style portraiture that I used to do a lot of like five years ago, what I was doing in there, I think lends itself super well to what I'm doing now, even though the subject matter is very different. Fashion industry. Oh, I was reminiscing. I don't do that oh, anymore. Right. Yeah, yeah. I still want to lock in, though. Yeah, check me out on Instagram. Yeah, I photograph people in the streets. Um, okay. Street portraiture. No, it's free. I just free? I just meet people in the streets, and oh, okay. and if they're interesting, I try to capture them in, in, in a way that looks interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's fire. It's not it's not a, it's not I'm a money sure thing. It's not like a New York City. Exactly. Like the views. Yeah, yeah. I'm from I'm from uptown. Yeah, I'm from from right. Washington Heights. So you know what I'm saying? Okay. You meet a lot of interesting people, nah, stuff like that. Up, you know what? Can I get a photo with you? Yeah, sure. Hey, let's go over here. I want you to sit on one of the pylons there. Sit on there however you feel comfortable. And uh, I'm going to try to just get something cool of you. All right, 2A, 125th. I'm shooting on film, so I got I to gotta measure my light. Okay. It's fire, bro. All right, I'm going to get one of you like this, and then I'm going to position you a little differently. All right, appreciate it. Okay, let me get you from... Actually, that looks cool. Yeah, just look straight out that bro, way. He, this nah, nah, he, he knew what he was doing. Okay, like... <laughs> I didn't say anything. He's just like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like, though. I want to capture you the way you are. All right, yeah, right there. Don't do anything. Just chill right there. Perfect. We're gonna do one more, and I'm gonna put my macro adapter on the camera, so I'm gonna get up close. All right, so with this, I can get decently close to you, so don't get freaked out, but I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get pretty close. Let's see. Actually, now, look look down at me like this. Yeah, yeah, right there. Like, like look into the lens. Okay. All right, here we go. One, two, cool. All right, I'm gonna hit you up. You you follow me on Instagram, right? All right. Yo, good to meet you, my man. There we go, bro. I'll hit you up if the photos come out. I'm gonna hit you up regardless, but I hope I didn't mess them up. <laughs> All right, bro. Nah, hell no. <laughs> you know you got that thing. All right, yo, peace. He was just walking kind of randomly in the streets, and that's not that's not something that's interesting to me. But because I got to know him in those 15 seconds when we started chatting, I felt like it was worth doing something, you know. There was a rapport there. And uh, those are challenging because then I had to, once I, once I was like, let me take a photo of this guy. Now I had to like find somewhere to put him to make it interesting in any, in like at least a little bit. So if somebody wants to get into street portraiture, talking to strangers, but it's kind of more reserved, not used to talking to people. Yeah. What's some advice you can throw their way to kind of like push them off the yeah, edge yeah. and get them into it? Yeah, I think uh, if you want to do street portraiture and, and you're, you're a little gun shy or, not the most outgoing. I think a good way to start is to um, do photo walks. The nice thing about photo walks is when you got this big group of photographers walking around, all the people in the streets look at you and immediately they know something's going on in terms of photography. So it makes it much easier to break the ice. And if your friend breaks the ice with somebody and gets a photo of, the, of whoever, you can very quickly be like, oh, can I get one too? And you slide right in. Some photographers don't like that shit, so you just gotta figure out whoever you're hanging out with. And then also, events. Find parades, like street parties, community events, wherever you live, stuff like that has to happen. In those places, I think people see the camera and immediately assume, yeah, of course, there's photography happening here because this is an event. So if you walk up to somebody and ask, you know, the, the odds are they're gonna be very amenable to it. Um, after you do that a lot, I think it's important to figure out what your style is in terms of communication. Because at least for me, and I think in New York City, like confidence matters over everything, especially on the street. So you wanna figure out what confidence means for yourself um, and how you communicate that confidence. Dímelo, dímelo, que lo que? TikTok. No es para YouTube. ¿Le puedo tirar una foto a usted? Sí, sí, déjeme ver. No, que decía ahí, que decía ahí, está bien. No, no, esto no es TikTok, es YouTube. Yo soy fotógrafo. Yo hago retratos de gente en la calle. Pero gente, digo usted, gracias. Sí, sí, sí. No, quédese usted ahí mismo y míreme a mí para acá.
Espérate. Se te va a dañar la cámara. <risa> ya te, te dijo feo. No, pero los feos tienen gracia también. Los Exacto, feos. eso es. Los feos tienen gracia también para la foto. <risa> Espere. Lo jode mucho a él, ¿eh? Sí, es muy bonito. 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 Mira, uno, dos. Vamos a hacer una más, una más. Déjeme ponerme un poco más cerca ahí. Así, mire, mire, mire hacia allá. No, no me mire a mí. No, un poco por aquí, por aquí. Por ahí, ajá, sí. Pero baja la cabeza o la cara un poco. Ay, ay. Me promete que se vea guapo Guapísimo. Mire la Pero si ahí no se, no se mueva. Cierra la boca, mi. <risa> Habla mucho los amigos suyos. <risa> Muy amable. Hermano. Igual, igual. Ortiz dijo que se llama usted. No lo joda tanto, denle un break a él. Pero él salió. No, no, fue usted solo. Pero tírele algo a él. Él es muy lindo, él es muy lindo. No vemos, no vemos. Igual, igual, igual. Damn, they would not leave that guy alone. They were all making fun of him. I'm just like, why? Clearly, he's the 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 punching bag of the group. The guy was like, oh, he's gonna break your camera. Don't take a photo of him. And then he's like, nah, ugly people have uh, are interesting too. And I was like, you know what? You're right though. <laughs> At least in my point of view, street in street portraiture, like it ain't about beauty. When, when we approached those guys, I don't know if you heard him, but he was saying TikTok, TikTok. And immediately what got in my head was, oh, he's he's thinking I'm one of those dudes on TikTok that just goes around taking photos of the girls on the streets. And like that couldn't be the like farther from what I like from what I want to achieve on the streets. Those guys on TikTok and YouTube Shorts or whatever, that just kind of, they got their Sony camera with the zoom lens and like some hot girls walking toward them and they take a photo. Like all the photos look the same and the photos are just about getting a hot girl on camera. There's nothing behind that. Those images lack any depth, meaning story even, you know? The internet is, is like, for artists, I'm gonna say for photographers, but I think it applies to artists in general. The internet is like the best and the worst thing ever, man. Because if you do any kind of art, art is subjective, and art is also potentially like difficult for people to understand. So when you put your shit on the internet, like you just you just expect to not be satisfied with the response that you get. And there's exceptions to this, but like the internet will beat you up, man, if you're an artist. And it is it's it's just like it's not gonna help you in a lot of ways, but. It's also the best way to get your shit out at scale. So that constant tension, man, that's it's like the best and the worst thing. And honestly, that like that's made me rethink a lot of what I'm doing because historically I didn't care about being like a photographer in like the, the academic slash art way. But I think the more I started learning about the history of photography and studying like the photographers that are well known out there and blah blah blah. I kind of like want a little bit of that for myself. Like I want to put out work that moves people in the way that those photographers have moved people. I feel like YouTube is not that at all. For me at least. The stuff that I've been making on YouTube has none of that. So I'm trying to like figure out can I continue doing that while also moving in the other direction of trying to be a legitimate photographer. And uh, I think the answer is yes, but a lot of competing thoughts in my head right now. All I do know is that when I'm out in the streets making photos, it feels great. And shout out to all my London friends. You all know who you are, especially the photography ones. You guys made it a beautiful time and I'll never forget my three and a half years living in London. What are some of the key differences photographing between there and here? I think the communication style is very different. In London, my abrupt New York like style of like being pretty concise and to the point, and like trying to like eliminate as much bullshit as possible out of my like pitch. Like that, I don't think works in my favor in London. I think as a photographer, you have to know where you are and what works in the place you are. It's a big problem in street photography community of people just like 
feeling entitled to do whatever they want, wherever they want. They never get tested because they do this in places where like, there's no consequences. But like one day, you're gonna take the wrong photo in the wrong place and you might suffer because of it. I'm just telling you, don't think that you're entitled to every photo. Uh, that's just my point of view though. Is there any, anybody specific you're talking to? No, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just think being self-aware yeah. and understanding how things work, that just shows a certain level of understanding and acknowledgement that I think and every good human should have. Um, you can't just show up to a new place, whether it's to live or to do photography or to run a business or to, uh, you know, whatever. You can't just show up and act like it's your place, like your rules are the ones that, are, that go in that area because that's just not how life works. The people of Washington Heights deserve to be photographed. Oh, absolutely. The people yeah. of Harlem deserve to be photographed. The question is by who, how, yeah. when, those are big questions. It's an interesting topic and I'm glad people talk about it. Um, that goes back to what I said earlier about like, I'd be wasting my life if I don't do photography in Washington Heights because someone's got to do it. We deserve to be photographed and a lot of people would be mad at me if, if I let a foreigner come into Washington Heights to tell my story, you know? Right. Like, that's, that's, that's a big deal right there. So that's part of why I feel like I need to do this. Yeah, Harlem shit. Yeah. What up, what up, what up? What's going on, but yeah. Nah, nah, I'm a photographer, up. bro. I'm just walking around photographing people. Yeah, well, can I get a pic of you, my man? We can be here today and go in the mall, you heard? Can I get a photo of you? Yeah, Keep cool. you alive forever. Yeah. I shoot on film, so this literally lasts okay, forever. Let's go. That's what's up. I'm Eric, by the way. What's your name? One. One? Call me one. That's what's up. I'm, I'm gonna give you my real name. My real name. I won't tell I'm nobody. It, though, my, right? my name is Ribs. That's how people know me. They don't know that my name is Eric, typically. Okay. <laughs> oh, right, I'm gonna just right. measure the light here real All quick. Right. Yeah, what you were saying, people here today, gone tomorrow. Right. That's one of the reasons I do photography, because... Right. I respect it. That shit will keep people around. Like, you see people like you all the time, and they should be scared, like, nah, fuck you. They ain't taking no picture of me. <laughs> but now I understand it. Yeah, yeah. The, ever the internet is forever lasting. So, you know... You ever heard of a, of a guy named Jamel Shabazz? He's a I photographer. Of, I heard of something called Shabazz. I don't... He's getting a lot of shine right now. He, uh, older? but he did what you just said. Like all he did was walk around the streets and photograph people in his hood. Yeah. And one of the things he says now is like, he can't tell you how many people right. of the photos he's taken aren't alive anymore. Yeah. We're talking like a like hundred people, maybe more. I believe it. I believe and it's just what you said, like here today, yeah. gone tomorrow. You never really know. But his photos are now all over the, all over the world. He's got books. Like yeah. those people are immortalized yeah. now. All right, let's immortalize you real quick. I'm gonna get one up close and then I'm gonna back up. Right there. All right, here's the first one. Here we go. One, two. All right, and then I'm gonna do one up close. Oh, I like that right there. Just hold that. All right, one, two, that. One, one, two. Oh no, did I actually finish the roll? I got another camera though. Now nah, don't move, don't move. I got a backup camera. All right, look straight at me. All right, let me get a serious one. I appreciate you, my man. I appreciate you. Have a good man, one. Man. Take care. All right. I'll hit you up once I develop these. Peace. All right, that was awesome. You know, actually, you asked me earlier, how do you get practice? Oftentimes people see you with the camera and just start talking to you. And what else do you want? Once someone's talking to you, that's it, it's game time. It's time to take a fucking photo. And uh, you know, if the person's not interesting, then it is what it is, but that dude was interesting. And he was in the door frame. He had his cup, we had money in his hand, like the story sold itself, you know what I mean? So I was lucky. But that doesn't happen if you don't go outside, if you don't go out and walk, if you don't put yourself in the streets to do this shit. Um, that's, that's what happens when you don't go outside. So those two to three hours I get once a week, precious. Oh, I gotta get this photo. Excuse me, miss. I'm a street photographer and I really like the scene of your, I don't know if this is your son of anybody, but I'd love to get a photo of him. Would y'all mind? That's fine? Yes, you cool with it? All right, just stay where you are, right there. All right, here we go. 
Can you just put your hand down for one of them? Just like hand down, just relax. Hold the door, hold the door. That's, that's perfect right there. Just hold that, one, two. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. Oh man, you got, you really do have a nice watch. <laughs> that's cool, man, I appreciate you. Oh, it's on film. Um, I was gonna ask you though, if you have Instagram or something, I can send you the photos after yeah. I develop them. Yeah, yeah, here, I'll give you my phone. I'm very happy with that shot right there, except that obviously I didn't get it on the Hasselblad. Not a requirement. Camera's a camera. But I think for him, the square would have looked fantastic because he's short, he's small. Uh, and the other thing is, the detail that I really wanted was the chicken because it really brings it all together. He's a little kid sitting on his ball eating chicken. And I was like, and then he gave the, his mom the chicken. And I was like, oh. Everybody you photographed today has been men. Yeah. Do you feel it's harder to approach women or how do you feel about yeah. that? So I, I, I love to photograph women in the streets. Obviously I want to have a diverse kind of collection of people that I photograph. With women, I definitely have a slightly different approach. I, I absolutely try my best to not like scare anybody in the streets, uh, specifically with women. Like women get approached on the streets constantly. And most times probably for bad things. So I don't want to feed into that. I wouldn't, I'm not surprised that a woman would be scared if I just walked right up to her. Like there's real reasons to do that. So I tried not to do that. What I do do is I try to communicate very clearly, very quickly. And I also try to make myself very present and, and seen very fast. Like I don't want to just come up to somebody from the side or from behind. Um, it's got like a woman, if, if someone can't see me like from a distance, then I don't think it's, it's like a good time to photograph. If someone is sitting and like situated somewhere, but I try to judge if like someone's really having like a moment where I shouldn't bother them or not. Um, but yeah, I, I think the moral of stories with women, I definitely changed my approach, especially in cities, in New York City, like it's a real thing. There's danger in the streets for women. So I don't want to like trigger any of those thoughts. Um, with that said, I do like photographing women. There's, there's so much interesting stuff that you can get from a photograph of a woman as compared to a photograph of a guy. And uh, it's not intentional. Like today, only photographing men, that's not intentional at all. I just think the people that have caught my attention and that have had the right mix of variables, it's all been men. Finish the sentence. I take photos because. I take photos because I enjoy taking photos. Definitely. That's, that's the only answer that matters. Uh, for me, at least. Oh, I gotta, see, I gotta get a photo of this lady here real quick. Excuse me, miss. I love your energy right now, dancing in the outfit. Uh, can I get a photo of you? I'm a street photographer, and I love what you're doing right now. I can show you the photos I take, so you can see. I, oh yeah, keep dancing, keep, don't worry about me, keep dancing. <laughs> and let me measure the light. I shoot on film, so I, I gotta measure the light. Can I put my lipstick on? Yeah, you do whatever you want, however you wanna look good. So I want you to pose however you feel comfortable and good. I like that, yeah, that's cool. Do that, go get your arms out, feel good, and, and do a favor and look up towards the light for me. Right there, yeah, just hold that. Hold that for a second. So see if I can just see your face a little bit more. Okay. Awesome, we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna do one, I'm back up, and I was gonna get the, the whole body shot. Okay. And here you can just kind of look at me and just, you know, pose relaxed. Arms down, however you feel comfortable. All right, here we go. One, two, amazing. Thank you. So we got a two for one there. Photographed a woman and photographed her in the sunlight. The sunlight's been elusive today. I feel like there hasn't been direct sun anywhere. Yo, that's gonna do it for us, man. Ribs, I appreciate you hanging out with me today. Of course, my man, I appreciate you. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, let the people know where they can show you some love. Yeah, man, the usual spot, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Ribsy is my name on both. If you don't know who I am, I make a lot of YouTube videos about film photography specifically, and uh, putting a lot of work into that, so I'd appreciate it if you check it out. But appreciate you watching this video, and it was my honor, Polly. Well, I hope I hit the mic. It's my honor to be on this show. I hope you guys enjoyed following me along today on this journey. All right, peace. peace. Now when they see us in the streets, all they wanna do is take pics, and I'm like, okay.